Brooke, welcome back to another Crafted Magazine video. In this video, I wanted to show you just quickly how to use the cut list extension in the Google SketchUp program. If you are into woodworking, you've probably seen this program being used, but I use this extensively in my J Bates miter saw station build. Uh, so when you buy his plans, you get a SketchUp file and you also get a very detailed cut list from Jay as part of his plans, but I modified the plan fairly heavily. So the cut list didn't really work for me and I ended up mod modifying the SketchUp file to, to kind of come to my final plans. And so when trying to figure out how I was gonna create a cut list for the massive amount of parts that were required for that build, I came upon the cut list extension, which is a free, extension for SketchUp. I'll put a link to it in the video description, but I just wanted to show you how it works. So, you know, you just build your model kind of as normal in SketchUp. The one big caveat is when you uh, create your components, which most people, when they create parts for a build, they're going to create a component. So for example, this leg piece here, this is going to be two pieces of laminated plywood. And so I made one of these a component and then copied it over here and then I could copy them over to the same on the other side as well. So the one thing you need to do for the cutlass program to work correctly is to name your components with the word plywood in them or you have a couple options but to me the easiest is just to use the word plywood. So you can see leg section plywood, shelf plywood, top plywood, top rail plywood, etc, etc. Um, what you will notice is I have some hardwood trim here around the edges and uh, obviously this is not going to be out of plywood so I did not name those with the word plywood in the name of the component. So what you do is you select your entire model once you have it built, click extensions and then click cut list and then you've kind of got a, a number of options here. So you can see the sheet material words. So this basically will notify the extension that the parts you're talking about are made out of sheet goods. So you can see plywood is one of those kind of keywords. And so I just use that, it's, it's easiest for me. We've got a lot of options here. Uh, you can do a layout output to an SVG file, a web page, a CSV, a number of different options. So I usually do a CSV and a web page, and then that allows me to, uh, to print those. Um, I also do include components and sheet goods. And then on layout, you can set up your saw curve, uh, minimize waste, line up parts to cut lines. So that way you're not doing a bunch of weird cuts. That way, you know, you can kind of do things in line if you're ripping on your table saw or with a circular saw or what have you. We've also got some options here for your sheets. So say you're using, you know, project panels, which are uh, two foot by four foot rather than a full sheet of plywood, you can adjust those settings here. So. These are how I have it set up for this project. So go ahead and click run and it saves uh, the list of your components to a CSV file, which we'll look at in a second, but it also generates this awesome cutting diagram. So what I generally do is print this out. And so I'll have this down in the workshop with me. You can see this is the, uh, the hardwood trim here. So that's just using that on a normal board. It tells you what size board you'd need, the board feet, all that kind of stuff. And then this is the sheet good section. So you can see all of those components I had labeled with the word plywood, uh, all are laid out nicely here. So you can see here, I would just run the circular saw uh, vertically here, and then I could do some table cut rips uh, horizontally and same, same on this sheet here. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that out and let's go into my documents and I can do, open this CSV file here. And so as you can see, this gives you a really nice little uh, segment here and shows you the sizes of your pieces and the quantity and, and all that kind of stuff. So I just kind of keep track of these. I, I use a combination of the layout file that I print off as well as this file. And that way I can know the dimensions of my pieces and can kind of check off the quantities as I go along. And so what I typically do is I will label the parts. Uh, you can either number your components or in this case, since there were so few, I just named them. So that way I can know what I'm doing. It also gives you the parts on the, uh, the hardwood pieces as well. So um, overall, I think it works well as long as you know how to use it properly. Uh, I haven't run into any trouble with it. I used it, as I said, extensively when building the, the J Bates miter saw station and I had no issues. Everything came together perfectly 
and it just worked out really nicely. One thing I will say is if you add, you know, weird little holes for, you know, dust collection, or if you add little arrows to tell you where to add, you know, screw holes or, or little things like that, it is going to throw it off. So you really, if you want to use the cut list extension, you really need to stick to just the actual wooden pieces that you're going to be using on the model. Hopefully that was helpful for you guys. I know this plugin has worked out really well for me and I plan to continue using it. Uh, this model, in case you're wondering, is for a metal lathe stand that I will be building here very soon. Just got a new Precision Matthews metal lathe. Going to be doing some machining work and also some tobacco pipe making coming up on our channel. So stay tuned for that. And until next time, Thanks for watching, guys, and happy building. And if you have any questions, just feel free to leave them in the comments. Thanks.